66 year old gentleman was referred to us uh, for the favor of endoscopic palliation of a metastatic uh, neoplastic lesion in the upper third of the esophagus. You can see here an ulcerous stenotic lesion. Uh, patient came to us primarily with absolute dysphagia. He was not even able to even swallow water. And uh, you can see there is hardly any opening seen uh, in, in this case. So uh, over 2,000 CA esophagus that we have staged so far, uh, it's never we had an oppor uh, opportunity to say we can't go across this stricture. It's always possible to uh, go across any tight stricture such as this if you use the correct accessories. Here we are going to use a biliary dilator with a hydrophilic guide wire like a terumo. You can see on fluoroscopy then we actually loop the wire and then gently push the wire. You can see the loop there and the loop is going across the stricture into the fundus of the stomach. You can see here and you can actually uh, trace on fluoroscopy. So when you have absolutely tight stricture such as this, uh, you use fluoroscopy and you change to a stiffer wire now after once you pass the catheter across the stricture as in this case, we have changed over uh, to a stiffer wire. So hydrophilic guide wire is now replaced with a stiffer wire because we need to pass on some dilators, the Savarigula dilator by Wilson Cook. So you can see here the wire is in place. Uh, it's an extremely tight sclerotic fibrotic stricture in the upper third of the esophagus. We removed the scope and now we are pushing a uh, 9 millimeter Savarigula dilator. You can see here over a guide wire with a marker there, the radiopic marker. Uh, very gently we push across the stricture and then uh, we usually do not follow the rule of three, but uh, for those who are beginners, they should follow the rule of three that we started with a 9 millimeter, then we advanced to 11 millimeter dilator as you can see here. And then uh, subsequently we dilated up to 12.8 millimeter. So we usually dilate up to 12.8 millimeter because we want to pass our scope across to see the extent of the stricture. Now there are some schools which do not believe in this, but we always make sure that we load a dilator over the guide wire and over the dilator we thread the scope, uh, railroad it across the stricture as you can see here. So we've gone across the stricture in the upper third of the esophagus and now we will gently move on into the stomach. It's a standard practice that you should go up to the proximal duodenum to rule out any duodenal obstruction, especially when you are looking at metastatic disease, that there are no lymph nodes which are pressing onto the duodenum. So it's mandatory to see the entire stomach including retroflexion and then we leave a metal wire. This is a classical Savarigillard wire which we have placed in the antrum of the stomach. Slowly I'm withdrawing the scope and we decompress the stomach by sucking out the air. And on fluoroscopy we'll put a marker on the lowermost edge of the tumor. So here I can see some nodule there. So I know that we can put a stent below that. You can see the lower end of the tumor. We are putting a marker there, a radiopic marker in form of a blade, which is covered under, uh, uh, under 3M micropore tapes. And now we have marked the upper end, that is the upper esophageal sphincter area. Uh, we know that we can go up to this point to deploy a stent there because this is an upper third lesion. So now you can see the stent being pushed over the metal wire under fluoroscopy control and we are going to deploy the stent. The upper end of the stent has to be just below the upper marker, you can see that. So we make sure that the upper esophageal sphincter is just uh, there below and the stent is optimally deployed. So optimal stent deployment is confirmed on endoscopy as you can see here as well as on fluoroscopy.